So what's going on in that head of yours, Nick? You've been gone Lost in the space between dusk and mid-dawn In and out of the loop, connected but withdrawn Living in sin with the law The shortest of all, the long time of the law My fight, my prince on Much love, we are the double S, we are one day Let's get it cracking Philosophize while we chop up smoke Then we blow it to the skies, baby lock and load Now that's a sure sign that we on the ropes When you got the occupies yelling stop the boats so The idea of Sunday Channel I was walking home from the studio one night Saw a pile of, of rubbish on my way home And found a book, this little bad boy And I don't know, it was just something about the title Something about the way the book looks. Irving Wallace was a you know a freelance writer, a journalist, and he was worked for a number of different publications and he would basically take on jobs and do assignments that he didn't really have much of an interest in in order to provide for his family. But he would always keep one day out of the week, Sunday for himself, where he would work on his own writing, you know, his own short stories and just basically describing the world as he saw it. And when we kind of started to read the book and started to get an idea of the whole thinking behind it, it just like screamed, screamed out at us because, you know, the whole notion of having to squeeze in your art and your music around all the other things that must be done in order to, you know, stay afloat, it really spoke to us and it's something that we have done with this album, you know. Just really glad that we stumbled across it. <laughs> we worked mostly on it from the studio that we share with uh, Adam and Solo from our show. So we can see we're just <laughs> chilling. We got Harry Connick Jr. on the fucking <laughs> keys. It's like, come on in. Usually, you know, they'll they'll rock up together uh, on a bright sunny day, wearing their sunnies, and like I'll open the door and I'll be all like, yeah, how's it going? Yeah, I've been in here for a little while. Nick and I would used to be sitting on the couch, screaming shit at him, backseat driving. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's it's like just bo boys that I grew up with, so. It, to be to be kind of creating something with them, I don't know. It's just a it's a laugh. It's like hanging out. It's just like making music with a friend, you know. Like it's it's very easy. It comes quite natural and organic. And yeah, we have a, we have a lot of fun in the studio with him. We started experimenting a lot more with synths and analog drums and live instruments, as well as the sample based stuff. So I mean, we weren't reinventing the wheel, but we were just. Uh, doing something new for ourselves. You know, the progression that we've had with Adit since towards the light or even earlier than that um, is crazy. And I feel like Adit is the one producer that gets the best out of us. I mean, one more go. I also think he's sort of <coughs> doing the da -na, da -na thing like too much. If you just bring it back to just straight, like right. you're smashing it, like you're smashing it on like, you know, that numbers game track. Or and something. then leave it for the backups. Yeah, yeah okay. try, try that, man, and, and leave that singing shit. Adam would often be bringing in, uh, uh, you know, this gun keys player, you know, we know him as Daniel or Daz, but he goes by the name of Krabs as well, <laughs> and plays the keys for Sticky Fingers, and him and Adam just have been doing a lot of stuff, bouncing off each other and almost producing together. Uh, other, other musicians, like writers, guitarists, our friend Jono, who's, an, again, another freak, he'd be coming through, Milan, Sarah Corey, plus, you know, the Horror Show boys, they're, they're always working on stuff there, so it is like a little bit of this uh, a mini universe. It's a hub. It's a hub. It's a hub. It's a, hub. It's a cultural hub. <laughs> I first met Nick. Uh, in the first couple of weeks of high school, like when we were real young. And then I met Jimmy a few years later just through the graph scene around around our, where we live in the inner west. Introduced the boys maybe like six months later or something. And um, you know, they were kind of like aware of each other for their respective talents, Jimmy for his graph and Nick for his rhyming. And putting them together, I think it didn't take very long for them to sort of spark off each other. So they brought me along the way and, and I guess the idea behind the track is just sort of um, looking back maybe at, at different things that you uh, have learnt and things that you might have done better or mistakes that you might have made but how, that they, how they've sort of shaped your perspective for now. With 
along the way, the way it came together, writing the choruses and the bridge. It was really natural and it was like a mad reminder of why this shit is fun, you know. That it doesn't lose that original focus of just sort of having fun and, and enjoying the ride. Um, and I think that's a really kind of strong theme throughout the record. And then in the last year or so, we've seen Jackie Onassis kind of explode onto the scene and, and really blow people away with what they're doing. And I'm sure it was the same with Jimmy and with Solo. We all kind of just heard it and all went. I always generally write by myself, so the opportunity to get in and work with other rappers who are definitely on the same page with a track like Sip It Slow was a, it was a really great experience, you know? One of the reasons we like to surround ourselves with, you know, talented and creative people, because it pushes you. The fact that we were just working together from the outset just meant that the sound was completely different. It was just completely new, new ideas. So the One Day crew is Spit Syndicate, it's Horror Show, it's Joyride, it's Jackie Onassis, all good friends, you know, we collaborate together, we tour together, we, yeah, we got into the hip hop thing together and that's what we continue to do. I think it's just reached a certain point where we wanted to, um, you know, make things a bit more official and have a, a banner that we could all represent sort of collectively. When we were younger, we used to talk about, you know, these distant pipe dreams that we'd have of trying to get our music out there and make a name for ourselves and one day it was kind of like the, you know, it was always the answer, you know, to when we get it happening, you know, it was like the kind of the thinking behind the whole thing. You know, I guess the idea behind the name is seeing how far you can push those things and how much you can make them a reality. So, however many years later, um, you know, there's horror show Spit Syndicate, we met Joyride not too long after, after that and he became a very integral part of the the operation, especially with Double S. The boys said they needed a DJ, someone that actually had stage presence, and so there I was. To simplify it, mentor, life coach, uh, confidant. As you can see, we've got a nice leather recliner here. We've also got a big record collection, including uh, Horror Show's first album. We've also got Joyride's first album right here. <laughs> it's good that he's still got copies of this, because this is very hard to get. Because I, I'm a bit of a stayer when it comes to turning up, I can just go through and, 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 and bring the ruckus, as it was, um, for the shows. And, and plus to show the guys how to have fun on and off stage. It's general sound effects, punch-ins, you know, stuff like that. Uh, <laughs> Beyond the obvious, you know, catching planes, getting high cars, smoking weed, failed threesomes. It's, you know, we enjoy good food, we enjoy good music, we enjoy good people. We don't have much else in common beyond those three things. Um, but I guess what that's what keeps us together. Four forty five bus hop it. I do it all while you damn old man watch. No the name when it came through your stereo. Jimmy Dean, James Flames, J Bazario. Better known to the authorities as there he go. Where the hell on my name sticker on the back? Rack rack rack. Hey, did he need to take me again from the top? <laughs> yeah, when you get in there, you're actually like, I want to nail this shit. <laughs> That's not good enough. For this. <laughs> Can you call me when I do this? Let's talk to him. Alright. Yeah, let it be known. Some sins you can never atone. Gotta settle for together alone. Better the devil you know than the devil you don't But I never kept my enemies close, nah Too much fire in the belly Eyes wide Lost in Translation is produced by our homie M Phases. We just really wanted that epic stadium music that Phases can pull off mm. We were staying with our man Ilya at the time They said they had a beat in mind that was made by Phases. Uh, they played it, I loved it, and it sort of went from there. He dug the beat, and he dug the, the track, and then the stars aligned. Yeah, I probably met the Spit Syndicate boys around 2005 or 6. Um, we clicked, whether in Melbourne or Sydney, and then later on with Obese. So I've known them for, for a long time now. They're probably the oldest mates that I have outside of my own crew within hip-hop. So yeah, uh, they're all right dudes. I like them. I have a distinct memory of him saying, are you going to use that beat? 
<laughs> you're not gonna use that bait, I'm gonna use that bait. Classic rapper shit. Yeah. Playing each other your, your yeah. albums. What's that, that for? Is that gonna make the cut? Is that taken? Where's the music that? So, that's, a, that's a pretty good sign that, alright. We should turn this into a song. When the boys started making Sunday Gentlemen, they uh, came down to Melbourne to work with some producers for a couple of weeks. So we took a few different trips. You know, the, the biggest one we spent just over two weeks down there, staying on Illy's floor. Yeah, it crashed on my couch for a few weeks. Um, I've done the same over, over the years, staying up in Sydney. Working with Styles was a mad experience for us. We've been big fans of what he's been doing for a while. To actually get in the studio with him and see him do his thing is fucking mad. You know, melodies come to him and he's just got a real brain for that. For, you know, hip hop, for pop. You can see it really just like the wheels turning. Yeah, I mean, every producer's different, but when we got into the studio with Phases, it was. I know it was quick, you know, like he, he would show us some beats and we would sift through a lot of stuff, we would sit and work on it, was just whatever we were feeling that day. Six, eight hours working on it and then we'd take it home, um, or take it to Italy's floor, <laughs> and then, um, so yeah, just start bouncing some ideas around. It was good seeing the process sort of happening in front of me and it wasn't my own, and um, yeah, I think they left Melbourne with the formative parts of Sunday Gentlemen, so it was really cool. There's something to be said from all I learned from you, so before I bid you to show me something brand new. They like to have fun, and they don't take themselves too seriously, and they don't take life too seriously. I don't know, if you, if you ever get a chance to be in a room with all three of them, like, it's worth at least a couple minutes of your time.